Hello, I am Subhash, and in this video, I'm going to teach you five ways approach for biosafety risk assessment. This video will be useful to the students, other learners, project managers, principal investigators, and anyone who is interested in learning more about bias management. So when you are doing the risk assessment, risk assessment should be done separately uh, for the bias safety and uh, it should be done separately, separately for the bias security. Because uh, bias safety and bias security sounds similar but uh, it's not identical. Uh, the purpose of the bias safety is different, the purpose of the bias security is different. If you want to know uh, more about the and differences between the bio safety and bio security and what are the similarities uh, maybe you can watch my other video here okay so uh, I'm going to teach you this five piece approach so five keys so each P uh, represents different strategy or different approach so the first P stands for pathogen and uh, when you are handling biological agents or their derivatives into uh, sorry, in laboratories, you need to consider these are some examples, but you uh, need to consider comprehensively uh, all the factors. So some of the examples, for example, uh, what is the infectious dose of that pathogen? You need to consider when you are doing the biosafety risk assessment. Then uh, another uh, factor you need to consider is a virulence factor. Then uh, route of transmission, route of transmission, how the pathogen enters the uh, human body or the uh, laboratory in case if they are exposed. So one route, uh, one route is inhalation. So we take the pathogen in uh, if the ear is contaminated or if the pathogens are there in the aerosol. Okay. So another one is uh, if there is any splash or uh, aerosol uh, lands on the mucus of the uh, eyes, that one is also possible. Then, uh, in case if the uh, good laboratory practices are not uh, practiced, or uh, the people, those are working there, are not trained properly, so if they are eating or drinking in the lab, so that one is also possible uh, source of the uh, infection. So you need to consider the route of transmission also okay okay the second P stands for the procedures and uh, there are there will be a number of procedures uh, in your uh, research and development activities but uh, for example uh, you need to consider uh, centrifugation because the centrifugation uh, uh, when you are using there is a possibility uh, uh, something uh, bad can happen or something unpleasant can happen uh, then uh, by uh, uh, bisecting cabinet, uh, another uh, example in the procedure. Okay, so whether the aerosols are generated and uh, what type of the mitigation measures uh, you need to be uh, you need to uh, take. Uh, then uh, what uh, types of the shafts are there in the procedure, as well as what type of the biological waste is there, and how you are disposing that the biological waste. So all these uh, factors matters. So the third P stands for place. So you need to consider the uh, your laboratory or the facility and uh, what type of the I mean, it's a design for the uh, research and development or it's a design for the biodiagnostic work or clinical uh, practice or it's a manufacturing. It depends on uh, situation or depends on nature of that facility. Uh, the risk will be uh, 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 different and uh, you also need to consider the workflow as well as uh, equipment those are in that facility okay so uh, uh, number four p uh, fourth p stands for people you need to consider people those are working there or uh, the laboratories those are working there uh, their uh, health status uh, is there anybody who is uh, uh, immunocompromised? So, for example, uh, if uh, any uh, researcher, uh, especially female researcher, for example, uh, are pregnant and working in the laboratory, so that one also you need to consider. Any, any, any 
uh, other uh, person or any uh, la uh, laboratory uh, have any uh, immunocompromised uh, status that one you need to consider. Then in addition to that one, uh, you also need to consider the behavioral uh, factors of the humans. And uh, based on that one, you can do the biosafety or risk assessment. The last T stands for the personal protective equipment. And in this uh, 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 category, uh, you need to uh, consider uh, uh, different types of the scenarios of uh, exposure or the likelihood of the exposure based on that one uh, you have to uh, uh, have a strategy and uh, the appropriate personal protective uh, equipment uh, needs to be used by the laboratory so uh, the situation or the type of the work and uh, other uh, procedures those are going on there are needs to be done that one we decide which types of personal protective equipment uh, you need as well as the protection level for example if you are working a bsl one level by safety level one then uh, there is a uh, 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 risk level is low but if you are working in a uh, higher by safety level uh, facility then uh, definitely this uh, personal protective equipment plays an important role for example in uh, bsl four or uh, by safety level four of the people, those are working there, or researchers or scientists, those are working there, they use the positive uh, pressure uh, suit to isolate themselves from the uh, laboratory environment. Uh, the basic idea is to protect them, uh, themselves from the uh, pathogens and other hazards or other dangers in the laboratory. Okay, so uh, to summarize, so this Thai-Fee's approach uh, is very, very useful for the uh, biosafety risk assessment. The first piece stands for the pathogen, second piece stands for the procedures, third piece stands for the place, fourth piece stands for the people, and fifth piece stands for the personal protective equipment. So this strategy can be used for the biosafety risk assessment. Even though there are different uh, strategies, you can use uh, other strategies also. So, uh, but the, here, uh, this uh, strategy uh, is called as Thai-Pee's uh, uh, strategy or Thai-Pee's uh, approach for the biosafety risk assessment. So, uh, uh, whatever, which, whichever strategy or the approach you are using, the fundamental idea is to uh, make sure that all the control measures are in place to mitigate the biosafety risk and uh, the biosafety risk needs to be done separately so this one is for the biosafety risk assessment thank you for watching